Welcome everyone to Check the Energy. Today I have a very special and very new guest with me. Her name is Dewi. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation because she's new. And so I'm going to be discovering and exploring so much of where we overlap and have a lot of commonality and in, in terms of our work, in terms of our vision. And I want to share a bit with you around her, um, you know, her background, just what she's bringing to the table and what we'll be talking about today. But first, I'd like to actually start off with getting grounded. And this very much relates to the, the kind of energy that both of us are looking to bring to the conversation, to each other, to the field itself. And this is a different way than I've done it before. And I like to keep it fresh and adventurous. And this was a, a suggestion that she brought to the table. And I thought, what a great idea that we that we bring this kind of energy into setting the space and how important that is. So I'll be sharing with you a little bit more about the topics in just a moment. But first, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and place your left hand over your heart and then your right hand on top of it and makes a bit of uh, a visual of angel wings on top of your heart. And as you're holding that position, you can take a deep breath in whatever way it feels comfortable to you. Have a sense of not only being grounded and present and available to listening to this conversation, but invite your energy in to this larger energetic field that we share with each other. So it's if you're here participating too. Notice that as you listen, you have thoughts and questions and sensations and desires to participate. Because that's what both of us here on the call today are looking to activate in you. Conscious participation. So breathe that phrase into your heart and into your body and into the earth below and the sky above. And then release your hands. Breathe in whatever way feels comfortable for you. Open your eyes if you wish. Or just chill and leave them closed as we dive into this conversation. So, Dewi, thank you for being here. I'm really, like I said, looking forward to this conversation and getting to know you more. And before I have you introduce yourself, I wanted to share some of what we are going to explore today. And one of the pieces that Dewi brings to the table that I, I find so interesting isn't even the word. Actually, the word that comes to mind is evocative. Like there's something evocative about it. When I, when I read this offering and this, this yeah, I, I'm not even sure how to phrase it, but it's ceremonial painting, a ceremonial painting process and using creativity or allowing creativity to help you navigate your inner and outer evolution. And I, I come from a family of artists. Creativity is a, you know, a huge force in my own life. And so I was really curious around what that it what that is like what is ceremonial painting 
when do we use it? How can we use it? How, how are we even like partners in the process? Um, I, I oftentimes think of art in general as like we think of the artist and what the artist creates, but I think there's this interesting play of mutuality. It's almost like as we create the art or the painting, it's also creating us. So we're going to talk a bit about that as well as thought leadership, which is a, another piece where we overlap because I love to talk about new earth leadership and what that means and how we are all leaders in the new paradigm. It's a, it's not a hierarchical approach. It's really bringing your truth and your purpose to the table. And so I'm so curious around her take around thought leadership, especially the, the divine feminine within this new earth paradigm that we are creating and building and already existing within. And then looking at how that plays out for her. And the last piece I want to add in here, and this is more of an intuitive, like every time I thought about when I would meet with Dewi, I kept thinking, I need to talk with her about recalibration and identity upgrade and the process that we're going through as, as individuals and as a consciousness and as a species, how we are changing, how we perceive ourselves, how we are shifting, and perhaps touch on some of the identity upgrades and recalibration that that she is going through if, if she's up for sharing that but I just have the sense that there would be some richness on her end to add to that part of the conversation so that was a big fat introduction around what we are going to be talking about here today and with that Davey I would love for you to share a bit more about your background and Actually, I'd really be curious to know how you came into all of these pieces that are playing out in your life right now, all of these ideas and visions that that you're walking the path of. Mm, thank you. Beautiful uh, setting the stage. I'm very delighted and grateful and honored to be here. Vanessa, thank you for shining your light and heeding the call and the way that you do and holding space for conversations like these. So my full name is Dewi Maile Lim. I was born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii, and that's also where I'm currently based. Uh, the Hawaiian name for our island is Moku o Keawe. And I like to honor the Kanaka Maule people that are at least for a thousand years have been here in Hawaii. They migrated up from Tahiti. And then before that, this is the ancient lands of Lemuria and Mu. And so just honoring all the beings that have graced this land and stewarded this evolution and, and paved the path and paved the way for us here and now where we find ourselves in this moment. And so I describe myself as a transformational artist and coach or guide, if you will. And ever since I was a little girl, two things really stand out to me. I've always enjoyed art as a form of expression. I trained with a Chinese master uh, silk, watercolor and silk painter who lived here, she still does, she actually still here, lives here on the island. And so from a little girl, I learned how to um, kind of like in the master's way, take an image and then transpose it and, and blow it up and learn how to, to have like a photorealistic style. And it wasn't until I went to college that I started to kind of expand beyond this kind of representational art modality and explored more of like these conceptual ideas that can come forward in academic art situations, which I also found to be kind of strange and odd, you know, how 
academic it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my 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 mind was kind of blown in that way, like, wow, we're we're talking about art to this level. It was it was eye opening. And then it wasn't until just a few years ago with my art that I actually started delving into a more right brain approach, oddly enough, with it, because um, up until then, I, I was much more focused on technique and less about, I didn't feel liberated in my art. And the other thread I'm going to weave in here too, from when I was a little girl was that I had hundreds and hundreds of pen pals. And this was like in the eighties before mm. the internet. And so I would communicate with these girls all over the world and write letters and it was snail mail and it, and it was an art form in of itself. It was a lot of fun for me. So with the advent of social media, I pretty much was an early adopter right away using the tools available to me through the internet to communicate with other people. So I've always been a connector. Mm. And so those two things kind of weave in into my work today. And when I found this modality a few years ago called intentional creativity, my whole world opened up because I'd already been on a spiritual path for now it's been close to 20 years, pretty much. Yeah. 20 years now that I've been focused on doing inner work. And so that piece got to join up and link up with the um, art piece with this modality and really what it is. Um, and I've adopted it and made it my own. And that's where the ceremonial painting piece comes in. But really what it assist, assisted me to do in my own journey is to awaken to kind of the the storyline that wants to be expressed through me at that highest possible uh, version of myself. So when I paint in this form, it's like a channeling that happens. And I, I facilitate experiences for others to do the same, even others who have never felt they could paint or have never painted. The process is so supportive and kind of nurturing in a way that it allows someone who even doesn't have an art background like me to connect in with that aspect of self that does have this high level kind of um, presence, I guess, or codes, these codes that mm -hmm. can come through the canvas and it's, it's layered. So it, you know, it can, it can be done anywhere over the coaster of co course of several hours or several days. It's kind of malleable in that way, depending on the container that I'm creating for the experience. But what the commonality is, is that it allows us to, first of all, connect with our hearts. Because if you right now look at your body, your torso, look down, you, your arms are an extension of your heart. So mm -hmm. through the painting, through the paintbrush, you're actually communing from that heart field space onto the canvas. And it's amazing what happens. It's different every time. Um, however, like most likely tears will fall or like epiphanies will happen. And it's like so visceral and like sensual where you could even like put your tears onto the canvas mm. as part of your blessing. So all of it is welcome in the space and there is this journey that happens through it. Um, but that's really what's led me up to now. And then the piece about the community and connecting with other women around the world is very much a part of my work. I've been a part of many different types of masterminds and sister circles over the years, both in person and online. So now today um, for the last, I guess, seven years now, um, I've been an avid proponent of women meeting and supporting with other women, either in free containers or paid containers. And I bring the creative practices in with my community, my, my community as well from time to time to facilitate going deep and having, um, this unique way that we can connect with ourselves and, and access information um, and allow ourselves to connect in with this part of ourselves that just wants to be free and express. Mm 
-hmm. And I, I believe that's a hallmark of this new earth, you know, age, golden age that we're anchoring in is like, we, we all get to express ourselves fully. It's safe to do that now. And Mm -hmm. so I, I, that's what I love to assist people to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it speaks so much to me around the, the power and the importance of creating a safe container to express. And it Mm -hmm. sounds like that that's so much of what you're doing is this space of permission and a space of access and a space of support. And I would also imagine that even though everyone is going through their own unique journey in, you know, whether it's in the community or it's through the art that you're facilitating, that there's threads of commonality that you probably see arise over and over. This is an assumption on my part, but I'm curious if, if that has come true. Like if you do notice that these themes are coming up over and over because we're, at least in my understanding and perspective, we're in such a profound time of shifting. It's, I mean, it is like, the pivot of all pivots. <laughs> it's like, yes. you know what I mean? Like there's, there's so much energy that is moving through us and be, we are knowing ourselves in new ways. We are knowing reality in new ways. We're knowing each other in new ways. And so I, I, it's like such a unique individual exploration and journey. And at the same time, what are some of the themes that you keep seeing over and over? Because I feel like this is a journey of consciousness that we're all on together at the same time. Mm. Well, the theme that keeps coming up for me over and over again, and I'm just now making the connection to the ceremonial painting, I, and I call them painting vision quests that I lead women through when I do my more kind of intensive journeys. And the theme, I think, through all of this, the, to weave it all together is, is is our deep need within ourselves to, to trust beyond measure, like to trust ourselves. So that goes for like, we're in this precipice of the unknown, right? And I guess we've always been in the unknown in our lives, but somehow now it just feels extra unknown, (laughs) Mm -hmm. especially since, you know, I believe, you know, if you're on this call with us, if you're, if you're listening in, you, you have a sense that you came here for this, that you embodied and incarnated for this time, specifically for some beautiful fractal way that you're contributing to this whole evolutionary journey, right? Only you can do that in your own unique way. And so to be able to trust in that, first of all, beyond just what I just said as words, Mm -hmm. and, and also that you, you know, we don't know how this is all going to unfold. I I believe we have a sense. I have a sense that it's all in divine order and it's all unfolding perfectly and it's all going to be you know the highest possible timeline is what i'm rooting for for mm-hmm. for myself and all those that choose it um cuz i believe it is also a volitional choice right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so just as you know as way showers like i work with trailblazers and way showers and the women mainly women who are in my community uh, that show up, they, they, they do feel like they're heeding this call that I just said, mentioned. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so there's like, at any point along our journey, when, when we're up leveling and we're calibrating and we're, you know, trying new things or like being courageous and saying the thing that no one else is saying, because we, we can't keep it in anymore. We, we must, honor ourselves now more so than ever in our truths that there, there's deep trust that needs to be activated and in the same way with 
painting, you know, it's like, I'm not revealing the steps. It's not like a paint and sip where you're like, this is the painting that you're going to have at the end of your, you were going to paint a turtle on the beach with a palm tree. No, that's not what we're doing here. Everyone's painting at the end of the process looks completely different. The mm. colors they use, the layers that have gone into that final piece, the, the image itself, the figure that appears, it, it's, it's a complete trust journey. So it, it really creates a safe space to have that transformation. And I believe, you know, as way showers, just having the intention that we're holding a safe space for others, whether we speak to it or not, although it can be very powerful to speak to it, it, it that is what's so, you know, and we're, we're setting the tone ourselves. So it's really important, even within myself to feel safe, like to make that my number one priority mm -hmm. and to assure myself that, you know, all is well and to be gentle too. And there is this beautiful dance that happens in the painting process and even in our own evolutionary journeys that I see with the women that I support and my own self too, where mm. we're needing to surrender and just, we can't not, not, we can't not go for that full expression of who we came here to be. Mm -hmm. I believe Otherwise, it like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So that's that's kind of how I see it. Is this trust? That's the through line here. Is like, no matter what containers we're a part of, or even if it's you know showing up at your kids, you know, baseball game, or just making sure that you're putting yourself in situations where you're nurtured and supported and safe. And also you're creating that for yourself. And then, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you like to play with others who are committed to that, I feel like that just kind of creates even more of this beautiful resonant field uh, mm -hmm. where we can experiment and we can play in, in the unknown. Mm -hmm. You know, like if, if we're going to be playing in the unknown, why not have fun and like, have it be like a game of like curiosity and exploration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I feel a hundred percent in agreement with that because it's in order to be in a space where you're relaxed enough to play and be curious and allow yourself that full expression, you do need that trust. You do, you do need to feel like you're in a safe space. And I, I, I actually, now that you're speaking about that, it feels like that's one of the, call, the calls or the tasks at hand is to, uh, you know, bring that kind of energy to the spaces that we're in and to also hold that energetic as a signature or a template that this is a safe space like this planet can be a, this planetary experience can be a safe space because when I at least for me I, I talk a lot about the the old paradigm and the new paradigm and how we're in that bridge time between the two right both exist and we're currently navigating the energies of both. And when I look at this old paradigm model and as clear and anchored as I am in, in the new paradigm and what that energy feels like, I still very feel very familiar with the energetics of the old paradigm, which is not based on trust or safety. And it's, you know, there's more of a sense of, feeling unsure or feeling, you know, unsure around who to trust, or if you can trust yourself, or do you feel safe? Or can I really let myself have this bigger game that my heart craves this fuller expression? And so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, for those of the, of the women, the community that you come across, 
that are, you know, you're clearly you're playing in a new paradigm kind of way. You're playing on a new earth um, energetic as, as you do any of the work that you do with them. For the women that show up and they're still holding the, I'm going to say like the template or the energetics of that old paradigm, of that fear of connection or fear of being truly authentic like how do you speak to that do you acknowledge and address that like I'm personally a big fan of like let's just call the elephant out like because we know you know it's like when you feel it you know it's there and I would rather have that level of transparency and know that if somebody can meet me in that then it's going to be a lot you know, more easy, it's going to be easier to play together rather than be operating on, you know, two different frequencies. So I'm wondering what you do. Do you notice that what you do to support those that are, you know, trying to make that transition into that new paradigm energetic? Um, And yeah, how, what's your approach with all that? Yeah, this is bringing up a lot for me. There's a lot of nuance in this that I could kind of go in a couple different directions with um because I am still on my growing edge with being vocal about what my own truth is about certain dynamics with the old way and I the the simplest way I like to because I do hear let me just be forthright about it like when we talk about the old paradigm as like the patriarchy or the dominance paradigm or use these types of words. I I tend to less see it like that. I see it more as like a separation paradigm Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because what I, I'd, I'd like to not name it to the point where it's like, you know, it's a men thing or like a feminist thing or like yeah. I, I'm tr- I'm doing my best to let go of the labels. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that does come up in my circles. And I, I, I have addressed it at times, you know, and all the other times. So I really want to I want to s- state here and now that I prefer to look at it as a separation, the way of separation. And what mm-hmm. we're stepping into is the remembrance of all that is, you know, the, the, the unity consciousness and and Mm -hmm. the oneness. And, and it's interesting too, to think about, this is something I've danced with is like, okay, well, yes, we're all one and we're also sovereign individual expressions Mm -hmm. of the one. So there's this interesting dynamic that comes up with that in terms of, um, you know, if I'm coaching someone one-on-one or if it's in my like paid containers where there's an agreement and we've come to that container with the with the agreement that you know if i'm seeing something i have permission that that's keeping them in in a limited space and i have a, the agreement and the permission to assist them to provide a, a reflection that they've already said they've welcome me to have, then I definitely am, you know, just reminding them of, you know, or offering them opportunity to say, well, you know, with, you know, if you're seeing it as the patriarchy, let's see as the issue, Mm -hmm. really what's beyond that, it's, it's this separation and control energetic Mm -hmm. underneath it, or Mm -hmm. superseding it. So like, and ultimately, we are remembering our oneness. So that's one of the ways, hopefully that kind of gives you a sense, but Mm -hmm. like a more specific way that I would assist someone to see that. And then just within my own self, of course, like I'm still unplugging from these ways that I've been indoctrinated, whether Mm -hmm. it was consciously or consciously by parental systems, governmental systems, educational systems, like mm-hmm. all of the institutions that I've participated with. I, I, you know, I was 
raised Catholic kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that too, I mean, I don't identify at all with Catholicism, but I do love the deeper thread of what I've come to with religion is like that, that gnosis, that, that knowledge of self as God living through us, like that's in all the major religions in the mysticism mm -hmm. aspect side of the religion. So that that's what speaks to me about, you know, the underlying, you know, what's really going on here, everyone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're part of a, we're, we're waking up to the fact that we are, we are that God, that God self. And mm -hmm. so that's what I do my best to remind myself of and, and others of ultimately, like when we're, when we're working intimately, especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love that. And I love that you spoke that I, I talk about remembering uh, a lot as well, because I, I see that as part of uh, the kind of the, the great unfolding and the great mystery that we are currently in. It's like we are discovering ourselves and our divinity um, and the, like the, <laughs> the magical divine spark of life and how that's moving through all things. Like, I think this is very much a part of the great remembering that we're currently in. And so I love that you brought that way of talking about the old paradigm. I personally don't, personally, professionally don't prefer, or I like, I don't talk about it from a patriarchal point of view. Like for me, that kind of plays into the, you know, divide and conquer playbook. Like I'm not interested yeah. in fighting with anybody else. And, and I, I think when I think of old paradigm, I think more of, I love the separation. I love that you talked about that um, because when we think of ourselves in that kind of way, it is easier to think like, I want to fight with the other, like I need to defend my territory mm -hmm. and these sort of what feel like, you know, in some ways I want to say archaic, but I actually think that might be an insult to the word archaic because there's like, <laughs> you know, like there's such value in ancient ways. And I yeah. think the ancient ways are really what it is that we are remembering, but because we've gone through these various systems of limitation based in fear, based in control, there's a lot of inversions in terms of how we have interacted with each other in relationship and so I I uh, yeah it doesn't necessarily matter that I agree with everything that you're saying but I agree with everything that you're saying <laughs> and I really love the way that you've talked about it and I what I'm finding for me like as I think about old paradigm new paradigm is just like in the, when I think of themes that are coming up or what am I seeing across the consciousness one of the things that keeps popping to mind for me is is like this voice activation, this, you know, this uh, knowing our own voice and knowing our own truth and allowing ourselves to speak that. And so even if somebody was holding, you know, a labeling or a patriarchy or anything, I'd, I'd say, speak that, speak mm -hmm. that if that's living in your space, if that's how mm -hmm. you've been holding your energy around it, let it breathe and let it Beautiful. out. And because uh, I, I, to me, that is how the energy is shifting from a frequency perspective. Like when I'm tuning into energy from a collective level uh, or filter, I, I see the frequency rising to such a degree that anything that's underneath the surface, that's of a lower frequency where we're feeling either trapped or stuck in that limitation, fear-based control type of model which is how I hold the old paradigm um and now I'm going to be adding like that separation because I think that is a is a great way to de describe it um but to that that those pieces of that are within us that are unconscious where we've kind of not kind of we have taken on the structuring, the code, the program of mm -hmm. limitation within our system. And I feel like the frequency is simply rising to such a degree that it's going to be pulled out. <laughs> like it's, 
it's coming to the surface, like no matter what. And, you know, for good reason, because life and consciousness is requiring us to step into a new kind of energy, to embody a new kind of energy. And so I come to the, the, you know, just personal understanding that it's better to allow yourself to work with that energy and maybe intentionally set the stage and set the support for yourself, knowing that things are, things are going to come up and they're going to be a little bit louder and give yourself the space and the grace and the love and the trust and whatever it is that you need to let the energy move. And it, you know, it's funny as I'm saying all of this and I believe all of this, like with the fullness of, of my being yet, when you hit the pocket, (laughs) like, you know what I mean? When you like meet yourself in in those unconscious pieces or those old limitation programs come up and out like they're naturally going to energetically, at least according to my worldview and my perspective. Um, It's so uncomfortable. I mean, like you got to kind of recalibrate in the moment to be both the experiencer of whatever is moving through your system, like being, allowing yourself to just feel the feelings or have the thought and allow the energy to move while at the same time being the witness and holding this container for yourself um, so the energy can move. And I kind of took that and like ran with it in a, in a, maybe a different direction. I don't know if you have any thoughts around that you want to throw into the conversation but oh my gosh love love this okay so one piece I want to make sure I because I'm receiving something I realized that you know when you when you mentioned about the piece about like if someone's feeling at odds with the patriarchy let's say and that they have this energetic uh density around that in some way that's the best way I can explain it right now and that there's something wanting to move through them and if that's what's true to speak to that and I realized that like part of me was still judging the part of myself I guess because I I see myself as like if I'm having a reaction to someone using the word patriarchy (laughs) <laughs> something's within me, you know? So I was, I realized that like, that's okay too. Like that, that, because that is a part of moving the energy and to like show up for that. Somehow this is landing for me, Vanessa. That okay. was one. Yeah, that was one thing. So I'm just like owning my, my piece in my response to that word. And then when you were speaking about um, giving it the space and then kind of weaving it in at the end again, like this tapestry, I I actually saw the painting process relevant here that I, I facilitate because all of that, like, let's say someone is working with, you know, their, their perception of how they've been a victim to the patriarchy or whatever that idea, you know, that, that they're kind of transmuting through the process or, or any way that someone has felt powerless or small. And then using the canvas in a moment to actually honor that in some way where it's like, okay, well, how did that feel? And if there was a brushstroke or a movement or a color Hmm. that represents that past way that you were locked into that, you know, for as long as you were, Mm. that that can have a space on the canvas where it can be honored with the knowing that this is going to be covered up and you're transmuting it by you having this way to express it. Mm -hmm. And so that could be done in any, you know, somatic way. You could dance it out. You could sing it out. You could uh, shake it out. You know, there's a lot of modalities out there that assist us to process 
through. And, you know, if there's trauma involved, of course, you want to like make sure you're getting support with someone trusted that can help you move the trauma through if there's still, if there's a traumatic component mm. involved with that. However, yeah, that that's the whole tapestry, like all of it gets to play in this rebirthing, right? Because we are in that, like there's a card in one of the decks I have called, um, it's a Alberto Vialdo deck. Um, I forget the name of his deck, this deck, but it it's called Straddling Bur Worlds, mm -hmm. where, you know, it's like we're in one world and we're in another. And this can this can be expressed in a lot of different ways, but I believe for the context of what we're talking about, it's like the new paradigm and the old, and we're mm -hmm. at this bridge point. So how can we make all of it okay where we're at and also still hold this highest level timeline as what's guiding us forward? Mm -hmm. And so, it, yeah, I'd love to... I mean, I'd love to hear what you think about that because it's it's this acceptance, you know. And with mm -hmm. that, and, and when we're making something wrong or judging it, that's when we're keeping the energetic around, the energy mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. and amplifying it. Even we're we're actually giving it additional focus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it's outside of ourselves, and there's nothing to take personal responsibility for in terms of if I spot it, I got it right. Or well, how mm -hmm. is that for me? How is this? That's a question I like to ask too, Vanessa is like, how is this all happening for me? Like whatever I'm seeing quote out there in the field that is of the old paradigm, how is that? How, how is that me? How is that for me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that can perhaps hold the key to liberation um, and freeing up more energy for focusing into what we do prefer, which is, you know, what, what we're here for, what we came here for. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have so many responses to this. And so <laughs> I'm like, we, I'm, I feel that similar feeling that you had uh, just a bit ago is which path do I want to walk with all of this? Because I want to share um, three different things that popped in as, as you were speaking and um oh gosh let me see which direction I'd like to go first <clears throat> the first thing that I I want to say is it, you know the the nature of this time as as I'm holding it and the energies that we're all kind of working with uh I think we we start to expand our experience of of being human or being you know spiritual being having a human experience i i used this phrase the other day in in one of the um programs that i run the energy guide certification and i said we're we are being birthed and we are birthing and we are also midwifing this process of of change that of transformation that we are all going through right now and so we're holding these these multiple roles um and it's interesting I, I hear you say you know how is this happening for me and I think that it's at least for me I found myself feeling more liberated when I was holding these, I, I, I don't, I love the number three for some reason. I just like the little you know, triangle in my mind or this triage of, um, you know, we're, we're being birthed, we are birthing, and we are also midwifing this process. And that the phrase that you said is happening for me, yes. And I, I also feel like it is okay. And I'm not saying you're not agreeing to this, but I came to a conclusion for myself when I was making that transition between, you know, that more, I'd say victim oriented or limitation oriented stance where it's like, why is this happening to me? And then you move into this phase where you're like, no, it's happening for me and I can learn from this and I can, you know, it's a different alchemical way of working with, 
whatever life is presenting internally or externally. But then I started playing with this third way, which was it's happening by me. Like, mm. and so I was, I'm allowing myself not to identify with any of those just solely, but yeah. all three. Like it is happening to me, it is happening for me, and it is happening by me. And there was something about the power of owning all three of those positions and having it be okay, that it gave me this great sense of freedom and inner peace. And uh, I, I just had this moment of like, ah, okay, this is what integration looks like. Like when we actually acknowledge that we are all of it, that we are each of these pieces. And I think when we, at least for me, when I tried to identify with just one, I still felt like I was playing like a duality game or a polarity game. And I was like, no, it's, it's all three. And I get to choose where my point of focus goes in this moment. And if I decide to choose that it's happening to me, then bless you, Vanessa, go for it. Like play it out, <laughs> like be in the victim mode, get cathartic, move the energy. Uh, and it just, yeah, it was just one of the gateways for the inner peace that I had always been craving. I know that just coming from a complex trauma background, not in terms of training, but in terms of experience, the struggle of being able to trust myself and the struggle of uh, allowing myself to even feel feelings in the first place, to hold this framework which I'm just, I'm a, just, I go gaga over creating frameworks for myself. It like, it, it helps me process all the things. And so that framework of two and four and by um, has been just really wonderful for me. So that was, mm. that was what I, I wanted to share. I had some other pieces too, but like that felt like the chunk that needed to come out of me right now. Yes, I love it. It's very multidimensional too, because the it's like past, present, future all at once. And it also allows for that high self-expression. The by me to me is like the being state that like I can be in this situation and wherever you are in the arc of for me or, or you know, to me, you know, it's like there's still this, supra presence of I am in this like and it's 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 all by design in a way too mm -hmm. it, it's like this is that what you mean by the the by piece yeah that we we get to play the role of creator and director and producer and and allow um allow the divinity to move through us that we are the ones that scripted this experience mm -hmm. for ourselves and and that's part of our reality too. That is all part of it's whatever lens of consciousness that you want to focus through, like that, that needs to be part of the conversation in, in my, um, in my personal experience. And then just what I'm finding when I check in with the energy, like there's a new kind of gateway opening up for everybody to start to understand that, um, this is also by by them. They are the ones that are the that are writing this script, and uh, we get the gift of coming down here of not just creating the screenplay, but living it out and getting to mm -hmm. choose in the moment of what orientation. That happens to be my belief system. I I'm not interested in necessarily anybody else saying like I I want to adopt this as well, or I think you're right, but that's where I'm feeling like the energy is moving. I feel mm -hmm. like that's part of the remembrance where we are just in this multidimensional space. That's exactly right. Where we can hold all realities as, as valid and that the, that we can choose which 
consciousness lens we're going to look through and that and they're all okay and to give ourselves the permission to be human and feel the feelings and be in the experience whether it's joyful or whether it's challenging and then to also switch consciousness and be in that larger meta perspective space of the intelligence of the design and the intelligence of the script and the divine energy that is moving through us and through life at all times. And that feels like it's being activated. I feel like there's a movement in the consciousness where there's a desire for more, you know, like to, to know themselves more. And some people are looking through it from a, a, you know, different frequency lens where they're reaching for more of the material world. And they'll probably pretty soon get to a place where <laughs> they're like, that wasn't the more that I was actually looking for. That's my, my um, assumption and belief. But it, it really is that that larger spiritual, spiritual reality, which, I mean, that is, that's kind of the game changer. Because when you're in that space, you you don't allow for that oppressive control um, system. You, you just don't buy into it anymore. And, you know, you talk about sovereignty and the, and the innate power that we have to, to choose um, where we direct our lives and where we point our focus. And I think like, that is really the conversation of, of the day of the decade of, um, you know, where we're at as, as a species. And I think as soon as we start to get into a space of really um, rooting into that, that it's all a choice, uh, it's just going to be a, com a completely different landscape that we're looking at. And yeah, though it, it sounds you know easy and beautiful, but I think it's such a strange juxtaposition in terms of the what's going on in the world because there's a lot of things that can also scramble our perspective and and make it a little more challenging to be in that higher consciousness self and to to see the more that we're really after. Um, so it's. Yeah, it's a fascinating time to be alive. I yeah. feel so grateful to be here. <laughs> I've I've like I came here for this. I love I love all that you're sharing these these nuances and uh it's it, I keep coming back to the painting, you know, like all it is a multidimensional process these ceremonial paintings. You know, imagine you know, everything you discussed and shared just that we're discussing and sharing right now in terms of this experience coming through a creative process, you know, being able to like, in ways that kind of go beyond our mental capacity of speaking about it. Mm -hmm. It's like an embodied experience of it through the painting process and it's like you get to have this in a it's like a meta experience in a more like momentary process for however long it lasts mm -hmm. and, and and that's the power of of you know intention right and and setting like we spoke to earlier like setting the stage like this is what's happening. Like we are evolving and because we said it so, and, and this is a safe space because I say it. So, and this is, I am, I am embodying my highest possible timeline because that's what is, you know, and then whatever comes up and forward to meet us as we're on that you know, expressive journey to <laughs> along the course of the arc of our experience with that focus in mind, that's all, all here for us now. And we get to be with it from this empowered place of like, yes, I'm the creator. Like there's this, um, my teacher, her name is Shiloh Sophia. And she, she uses this concept of the visionary screen first and foremost, when you're standing in front of the canvas, 
you know, envisioning or anywhere really envisioning your sight line as a screen, mm. your visionary screen, and that you are conducting, you are navigating <clears throat> from this place of, of um, creation, really, mm. and, mm-hmm. and that you get to express and engage, you know, moment to moment through choice. This is my addition now to, you know, how you're going to be in this dynamic play, interplay. I would love to paint with you. I think that would be so much fun. I think it would be too. And I love her work. That's so cool. I didn't know she was your your teacher. Yeah, she's she's the one that I learned this intentional creativity method from. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I know I have as you're speaking this, I have this uh this vision of having just an entire wall, like a huge mural and being able to actually climb up on a ladder and um you know, it's like really painting it's painting life. It's painting life force. It's painting the universe. It's painting our stories. It it is all of those things. And I, you know, I love, I love that you do this. And I also love that the idea of thinking of our life as the canvas and every day we are making a ceremonial painting with our life, like with our choices and our perspective and um, it, uh, to me, I feel like that brings art to life in a whole new way. And at the same time, I love the idea of having this tangible representation of a canvas and the the how the colors and the painting just wants to move through you and be expressed and how that might evolve over time. Like, I would love to see it. How does it gallery you should have a gallery of like all of these amazing uh, you know ceremonial paintings I, I just I'm just having this huge vision of being in a space with uh, all of the women that you've had these incredible experiences with and seeing their painting and and uh, yeah it's a beautiful image so join join me in it if you can. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I am seeing that. Yeah, and it's I always encourage participants to document their process along the way. And even, you know, like multidimensionally speaking, you know, when you have an insight or awareness that, you know, in a timeline, 3D timeline sense was like, there was like a missing piece, like you, the, the storyline you're getting your learnings and your lessons and you're you're getting an experience but then there's something else that pops in later that assists you in a moment even it could be you know an image or something that lets you lock in a deeper sense of what that past experience was about for you or some deeper awareness well that happens in the painting process too where it's like okay this image of an owl is coming to me and I don't know why you know Mm. but the owl came to me in the visioning and like I'm gonna make a note of the owl and and so maybe the owl doesn't necessarily appear like a realistic owl but maybe there's an owl feather or Mm. repeated pattern that alludes to the owl's feather or something but that and then later in the journey just like in life there's a deeper insight that comes okay like this is what the owl means for me and I didn't realize that that's why it was coming through let's say so that just kind of reminds me of how it can be for us when we're open to um, seeing ourselves as multidimensional beings and also having you know this openness to the insight coming when it is when it's meant to come Mm -hmm. and that next puzzle piece drops in Mm-hmm. in the perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm living that reality daily right now. <laughs> <laughs> like every day I'm like, whoa, I am totally blown away because I had not thought of it in that way before. So um, I definitely feel you on that one. <laughs> and yeah. it is, it is, um, it is such the journey. So 
we have had a lovely extended conversation. I actually lost track of our time and saw that we've gone over. So at this point, I just want to, you know, big bow to you and say thank you so much for playing with me and having this conversation and taking it to a whole, a whole nother level, um, you know, in multiple ways. I really appreciate your presence here today and, and everything that you shared and brought to the conversation and, and what it, what it brought out in me. So thank you very much for joining me and we can, uh, you know, end on you sharing more on where others can find you online, um, anything you want to say to close out, and then we will end our conversation for today. Thank you so much. I feel the same way. And uh, if you would like to keep in touch with me, I welcome sharing space with you. There's a variety of ways we can do that. Uh, one of them is by you joining my mailing list. If you feel like you'd like a taste of what it's like to create with me, I have a really fun free gift called You Oracle. Access the Oracle Within. Create a handmade Oracle deck for personal divination and transformation. So this is like for your own personal use. I've had a, a past participant say that she loves this deck just as much as her favorite deck, if not more so. And she has it on her um, table and she uses it every day. Mm. Um, so you can find that at bit.ly forward slash Oracle deck wor workshop. And I think you'll probably have a link. Yeah. Somewhere, mm -hmm. Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I also, I have, I'm on YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook. Those are the main places that I play. And I also have on my YouTube channel, a series of conversations for a show that Vanessa actually was on that I just recently wrapped the first season of called Quickening. And it's conversations on embodied feminine leadership and new paradigm business. And the way that those calls have been hosted have been very unique, where um, it's a series of three women I feature every show. And uh, we have conversations about feminine leadership and birthing, you know, and anchoring in the new the new paradigm through our work. And so you can check that out um, on my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in uh, participating, because it is done with a live audience, there is a way if you get on my mailing list, you can when I launch the next series, you can be a part of those live calls. That's what I got. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for tuning in. I will be back again soon with another episode in Check the Energy. Take care. Aloha.